We got a rule in the kitchen. Don't touch my knife. Don't touch my Johnson. Since 1973, you can't have any facial hair except for a mustache if you play for the New York Yankees. <laughs> and while we aren't aware of the facial hair rules for chefs who work at the White House, we do know of at least 10 weird rules White House chefs are forced to follow. Rule is... Yes, I know what yeah. the rule is. What the president wants, the president gets. We have pizzas, we have 300 hamburgers. Many, many french fries. Try walking into a restaurant and telling the chef what foods they are allowed to serve and not serve in their own restaurant. We all know that request will probably not turn out well. However, try being the President of the United States and doing the exact same thing to the person in charge of creating all of the meals prepared for you in your home. The result will, amazingly, always turn out in your favor. That's right, the President has full authority to ban any food they don't like from the chef's repertoire. I don't want this! President George H.W. Bush put his foot down when it came to broccoli. After being served the dreaded vegetable once, he decreed that it should never be served to him again. However, unlike some other presidents with other food items, he did not ban it from the White House kitchen entirely. Mrs. Bush sometimes asked for broccoli, and that was okay. George was happy to just never see it on his plate again. What kid would not love to have this kind of power over what their guardian put in front of them? To be able to raise your hand and tell your mother that you never want to see Brussels sprouts on your plate again, and to have her respond with a, yes, of course. Wanting to grow up to become president just took on a whole new meaning. If you were president, what would you do for everybody? Take care of the whole United States of America. Cook thousands of hard-boiled eggs. You can't have more than two hard-boiled eggs for breakfast, Dr. Wells. We're pretty sure White House chefs are very happy that Easter only comes around once a year. Even those of us whose abilities in the kitchen extend to only being able to make toast have probably boiled an egg or two in our lives. But how about 7,000 of them? Well, if you work in the White House kitchen on Easter, that is a very real possibility. Every Easter, the White House holds its annual Easter egg roll, which entails kids pushing hard-boiled eggs along the White House lawn using spoons. Then there is usually an Easter egg hunt and some other festivities as well. Hey, 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 the Easter Bunny is here. Happy Easter! It sure is fun for the kids, but maybe not as much for the White House kitchen crew who are responsible for hard boiling and hand dyeing most, if not all, of the eggs themselves which in some years have totaled up to 14,000. So next time you're sitting at the kitchen table dying eggs with your kids or your nieces and nephews thinking about how tedious a process it is to do one carton of eggs, think about a thousand more cartons and be thankful you aren't working in the kitchen at the White House on Easter. Oh, I hate my job. The pay is less at the White House. Now we do more and more work for less and less pay. There may not be many more prestigious positions for a chef than being the executive chef at the White House, but there are definitely plenty of better paying ones. An article published in 2005 stated that the salary for a White House executive chef comes in somewhere between $80,000 to $100,000 per year. Now, that amount of money is definitely nothing to sneeze at, and many of us would be more than happy to have a similar salary. However, in the high-end executive chef world, that is actually some somewhat on the lower end of the spectrum as far as income goes. Could you pay me in advance? <laughs> <laughs> and to add insult to injury, they don't get paid overtime. Typically, if your boss expects you to be on call at all hours of the day and calls on you at all times, there is no way you aren't getting overtime pay for all those extra hours. That is, unless you are an executive chef at the White House. The people who serve in that position are never paid overtime. Never, never, never. If your kid has dreams of being a famous chef one day, this is maybe another reason to encourage them to work at getting their own show on the Food Network rather than making breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the most powerful person in the country. Look, I feel bad for him too, but he'll get another job. If the president wants you to brew beer, you will brew beer can brew your own beer? Sure. We haven't been to culinary school, so we can't be sure, but we're pretty sure that one thing they don't teach you at chef school is how to brew beer. 
However, if you were a chef at the White House, you do what the president wants. And if the president wants you to brew beer from scratch, then that is what you will have to do. We know this because it happened back in 2012. President Barack Obama, aware of the growing trend across the country of people brewing their own beers at home, thought that the White House should get in on the trend and told the kitchen staff to get brewing. The White House even released a video explaining why they did it and how it turned out turned out great. And for those wondering if this homemade brew was a liquid consumed at the now famous beer summit, the answer would appear to be no, no, no. Given that said summit took place in 2009, three years before the White House Make Our Own Beer video was released. And while brewing beer was probably not something the head chef was familiar with prior to Obama's request, it did give them something new to add to their resume. Just in case, work as executive chef at the White House wasn't enough to help their LinkedIn profile stand out. I have fired up my resume, as I suggested all of you do as well. They are on call 24-7. Call me anytime, day or night, not Tuesday evenings before 9. For some jobs, you expect to be on call at all times. Doctors, cops, firemen can all be woken up at any hour of the day with an emergency they need to respond to right away. But what food emergency could there possibly be that requires the White House chef to be available at every moment of every day? Well, the simple answer is, the president is hungry. We all know that feeling of waking up in the middle of the night and feeling a little peckish, but at 2 a.m., most of us are also in no mood to cook, so we just stuff our hands and into a bag of chips and head back to bed. Back to sleep. Well, if you're the president, you could technically summon the White House kitchen staff and ask the chef to whip you up something delicious in the middle of the night. While this sounds like just another reason not to become the White House chef, the truth is that this happens very rarely. In fact, multiple chefs who have worked at the White House have stated in interviews that these requests were very rare and some were never asked to cook at crazy hours of the day. Thankfully, it would seem like knowing that power exists is enough for most presidents rather than actually using said power to ruin the chef's sleep because they have a 3 a.m. hankering for bacon and eggs or a PB&J. Although we assume they could make those things themselves. Can I cook or can't I? They cook whatever the president wants. I want to eat whatever I want when I want! Not only do most restaurants not allow you to order something that isn't on the menu, but plenty don't even allow you to customize your order. We've all seen the menus with a statement in big, bold letters saying something to the effect of, No changes, substitutions, or customizations allowed by order of the chef. Well, that sure wouldn't fly at the White House. The president is the leader of the country and of the White House kitchen, which means if they request a meal, then it is up to the chef to make it happen. And sometimes that can mean making something that they would never want to eat themselves or even have thought of making, as was the case with President Nixon's love of cottage cheese with ketchup. Ew! 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 You see, the president felt that he should eat more cottage cheese for health reasons, but in order to cover up the taste, he would have it covered with ketchup. As unappealing as that flavor combination sounds, at least that's a very easy meal for the chef to make. But at what cost? The chefs get top security clearance. You've been granted level 3 security clearance. Despite rumors pointing to the contrary, there actually is no presidential food taster who sits next to the president and takes a bite of their food to make sure it isn't poisoned. This means that the White House chef has direct access to the president in a way that very, very few people in the world do. Because of that, and because the Secret Service doesn't want to have to station agents in the kitchen 24-7 to do nothing but watch the food being made, White House chefs are given the highest level of security clearance called Top Secret Presidential Proximity. Whoa, that is top secret. As one former White House chef, Walter Sheeb, said, obviously this is one of the most security cleared posts you can get. In terms of the few of us that are in the kitchen who have that clearance, if you think about it, we're not just around outside and next to the president, we're physically inside of him. So while the job of White House chef can definitely be more intense than cooking at any other location, we think that being able to say you have or once had a top-level security clearance definitely makes you the cool kid at the table whenever you and your chef friends get together. That's one way to beat Bobby Flay. Yes, I oh my god, it's Bobby Flay! State dinners are filled with crazy rules. 
The rules are there are no rules. State dinners at the White House are some of the fanciest affairs one can ever attend. You think Martha Stewart throws a fancy dinner party? Well, compared to state dinners, a meal at Martha's is like eating leftover Taco Bell out of a garbage bin behind the restaurant. State dinners are White House dinners put on to honor kings and queens and other world leaders. And as if serving all of these dignitaries wasn't enough pressure on any head chef, there is crazy added pressure given the weirdly specific rules they must follow for the meal service. Rule number one, follow the rule! First off, the staff is not allowed to ever offer any guest a second portion. The only time a second portion is served is if a guest asks for it themselves. They say the key to telling a good joke is timing. Well, that is also the key to serving a meal at a White House state dinner. From the second the first course touches the table to the time the last course is served to the guests will all take place in 55 minutes or less. Add to that the requirement that each course be ready to serve without any delays, and it isn't hard to imagine how utterly stressful these nights can be for the White House chef and their staff. We are getting stressed out just thinking about it. I can't handle this! I can't! They have to build a gingerbread house. Thank you for the lovely gingerbread house, Lois. Oh yeah, it's perfect! Along with the executive chef, the White House also employs an executive pastry chef, whose job it is to create all of the desserts for meals, events, and gatherings in the White House. However, another task they have every year is creating a gingerbread house that will be placed in the state dining room, where it will be seen by about 60,000 guests who make their way through the room over the holiday season. And you know those gingerbread house kits you get at the grocery store? Well, that isn't what these White House gingerbread houses look like at all. It's bigger than that. These large and intricate houses take months of thought and planning and can take up to four days to build and decorate. These days, it might not sound as intimidating given all of the holiday competition baking shows we see on the Food Network and the amazing creations that are produced there. But rather than three experts judging your work for the chance to win $10,000, you have the president, their family, and thousands of others walking by and judging your gingerbread construction skills. I order you to throw out that gingerbread house. It's from Christmas. Fine, but you're going to be leaving a lot of ants with no hugs. Kitchen staff can't comment on hiring process. No comment! It would be odd and a little funny if you ever heard a chef, when asked about the possibility of becoming the next White House executive chef, say, I can neither confirm nor deny those reports. Basically, pleading the fifth sounds a little extreme given the job is chef, not CIA director. But if you are part of the White House kitchen staff, that is basically what you have to do if asked about any executive chef possibilities. I, I plead the fifth. About 15 years ago, Christetta Comerford was the assistant executive chef at the White House, and rumor had it that she was ahead in the running for the top job. Well, when asked about it, she kept her mouth shut. In an article at the time, it stated, The candidates have been asked to keep mum about the selection process, and they are aware that the wrong word may remove them from consideration. As a White House employee, Miss Comerford, 41, has refused to provide anything beyond the culinary world's equivalent of name name, rank, and serial number. We cannot. You know the rules of this house. Once Comerford got the job, she did do interviews and has since been pretty open about her experiences. So it looks like it's just the selection process that they must stay silent on. If you like it, stay silent. We've got more. Just tap or click another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.